We consider it a joy and a privilege to be able to hear the Word of God today as we celebrate the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. As we saw on the front cover of the bulletin for today, we hear the Lord saying from Isaiah chapter 56, Foreigners I will bring to my holy mountain. You see, God's plan of salvation always uh, throughout the Old Testament is that God would make for him create for himself a holy people, a holy nation of the children of Abraham, and through them call all the rest of the world to come. And they, the people of Israel, as God names them, would be a light to all the nations, and all the nations would come to their light. And the prophet Isaiah says that. And God's plan is for all people of the world to come be with God himself, on his holy mountain. And that's how we gather today. That's how we are hearing God's word is, at least in a spiritual sense, the Lord gathers us to his holy mountain to hear his word. Well, today in our gospel reading, we're going to hear of a foreign woman who comes to Jesus. And notice what the foreign woman calls Jesus. She calls him Lord, Master. And she calls him Son of David meaning the Savior that God sent to the people of Israel. And here she is, a foreigner. And yet, she's begging the Lord for mercy. What she doesn't deserve, healing for her demon-possessed daughter. She's asking for anything that he might give because she knows she needs him. Her daughter needs him. And he's come to be a Savior of the world. We're going to talk more about what's unusual about that situation and what the Lord wants to teach that foreign woman and all of us who are foreigners now incorporated into God's family. Let's begin now with our opening hymn.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Creator God, we confess our sinful thoughts, words, and deeds, as well as our sinful condition. We are not the creatures you intend us to be. Forgive us and rescue us from our unrighteousness, that we may reflect your righteousness and holiness. Promised Savior, we confess that we are not only in the world, but too often act as part of it. We are as aliens in your kingdom of grace. Forgive us and graciously treat us as your own people for your own name's sake. Holy Spirit, Comforter, we confess that we have wandered from the truth and sought to fulfill our own wants and desires. Forgive us, renew in us pure hearts, and guide us to walk in your ways each day as long as we live. Our Heavenly Father sent his Son into the world to bear the sins of all. He has opened the kingdom of heaven to all who trust in him for salvation. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. To you, O Lord, I call. My rock, be not deaf to me. Lest, if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I call to cry to you for help. When I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary, Blessed be the Lord, for he, he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exults, and with my song I give thanks to him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, you give your children many blessings, even though we are undeserving. In every trial and temptation, grant to us steadfast confidence in your loving kindness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear now the word of the Lord. The Old Testament reading for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 56th chapter. Thus says the Lord, Keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called the house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in the gradual for these Sundays after Pentecost. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The epistle reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Roman Christians, the 11th chapter. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. For I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the re reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake. But as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in the verse of the day. Hallelujah! The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Hallelujah! The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. 
And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What was it that surprised Jesus about this foreigner, this Canaanite woman who came to him? You know how Jesus says in the end, O oh woman, great is your faith. It's like Jesus is surprised to find faith. He's shocked to find faith in such an unexpected place. They're outside of their country, really, outside of the land of Israel. They're in this foreign place along the Mediterranean Sea. And for this foreign woman, of all people, to have heard about Jesus as the Messiah, Jesus is surprised. And that's interesting. Now, remember two chapters earlier in Matthew, which time-wise could have just been days earlier for Jesus and his disciples, when Jesus was teaching the people in parables about the kingdom of heaven. Remember that? And remember how Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a sower who went out to sow seed. You remember how the sower scattered that seed? He scattered it so liberally, anywhere and everywhere that some fell on the path, some on rocky soil, some among thorns, some in good soil. He sowed everywhere, right? And it's, a, it's as if the sower recognizes that 
you never know where the seed is going to grow and produce fruit. So let's just scatter it everywhere. And today we come to a place where we wouldn't expect the seed to have spread or much less to be growing and bearing fruit. And yet here stands this Canaanite woman in front of the sower himself, Jesus. And even he is surprised when he finds the fruit of faith. Ah, faith in an unexpected place. But what is it that shows that this foreign woman has the fruit of faithfulness that Jesus is looking for? Well, it's her attitude toward Jesus. She calls him Lord. That means master. And she calls him son of David. That means God's promised savior and king. So she knows who Jesus is and calls him her master. And she recognizes God's people, Israel, his church. That's how to rightly see and enter into God's invisible hidden kingdom is by faith. Faith in Jesus as the Savior sent by God and faith that God calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies for himself a chosen people, his treasured possession, his precious treasure. God sent Jesus to give his life, to make us his own precious treasure, a people belonging to him by faith. But let's understand what's going on in this interaction of the foreign woman with Jesus. Now, Jesus, she, co she comes and she begs him to heal her daughter who's possessed by a demon. And Jesus does not answer her a word. He ignores her. It seems like Jesus is being rude and he's just turning her away. Ah, the funny thing is the reaction of Jesus' disciples. Remember how right before the feeding of the 5,000, the disciples wanted Jesus to send the people away so that they could find themselves some food. Remember how the disciples said, send them away, Lord, dismiss them so that they can go find food. And remember what Jesus said to the disciples? They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. And when they, the disciples, couldn't feed the people, how are we supposed to feed 5,000 people? When they couldn't do it on their own, then Jesus took over and he fed the people. And only then, after they had eaten, did he dismiss the people and send them away. Now today, the disciples, they want this woman to go away because she's bothering them. She's nagging them. And I kind of get the sense that they're asking Jesus, Lord, why don't you just do this simple healing? We know it's easy enough for you. Why don't you just give her what she is asking for so that she'll go away and quit bugging us? They want her to go away because she's bugging them. Lord, just give her what she wants. But today it's quite the opposite. Notice, Jesus himself is ignoring her. He's seeming to turn her away without helping her. Because she has to understand first something about Jesus. He's testing her. She has to understand. Everyone has to understand. He's not just a wandering miracle worker to come and make people's inconvenient lives more convenient. And he's not a miracle worker just to wow people and provide entertainment. And he's not going to do the miracle for his disciples' convenience either. Just give her what she wants so she'll go away. He has been sent as the Savior for God's people. 
not just to do little miracles of healing this and healing that, but God sent him as the Savior, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus has come to deal with the root of the problem, sin. And he's come to take away sin, which in turn will take away all those sicknesses and diseases, and even our death. But Jesus says a curious thing to the woman. He says, it wouldn't be right for the master to take away the children's bread and to throw it to the dogs. Now perhaps Jesus is thinking of like the dogs outside in the alley. Is he going to chuck the bread out the window to feed the dogs out in the alley? In other words, Jesus isn't going to abandon his mission of calling God's chosen people, first the children of Abraham, and then all those who are adopted into the family by faith in the God of Abraham. But God's plan always, since the time of Father Abraham, was to make Abraham's family a blessing to all the earth so that they would come and be a part of this family. Through the family of Abraham, God would call all the nations to his holy mountain, just like we saw on the front cover of the bulletin. So here's Jesus's picture. He's not just going to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. In other words, he's not going to take his ministry that's supposed to be first and foremost among the people of Israel. And he's not going to just give up on them and go instead to the Gentiles, to foreign countries. He won't take away the bread from the children and throw it to the dogs outside in the alley. God's plan is that first, the children are fed. But the funny thing is here, this foreign woman understands. She doesn't miss a beat. With quick wits, she responds to Jesus, Yes, Lord, yes, Master, you're right, of course. And the Master might just bring a dog from outside into the house. And then as part of the family, the dog would have the privilege of eating the crumbs that fall from their master's table. You see, in the master, God always provides in abundance. It's always overflowing. Remember Psalm 23? My cup overflows. Even the children eat and are satisfied and... Twelve baskets of leftovers might be collected up when the children are done eating. Do you see? This woman isn't asking for Jesus to heal her daughter instead of his own people. She doesn't want to be a dog out in the alley. She wants to be brought inside to be a part of the household of God, part of the family of Israel. And even if she's just a dog brought into the house, even the children at the table are masters to her. And that's a surprising thing about this. She uses the word masters, plural. The father of the house, as well as the children, are her masters. But she needs to feed on the bread that they all need to eat to survive. Now, when our dog at our house, really Joel's dog, sits at our feet at the table and begs for food, we call it bad manners. The funny thing is, she never really begged much before this summer, so I could blame it on our daughter's dog, our other grand dog, Husker, the Husky, who lived with us for about a month this summer and pretty much taught our other grand dog, Ginger, to beg at the table. But it's as if Husker was saying to Ginger, well, in my family where I've grown up, there's always plenty of food and they care for me enough to drop some at every meal. 
Now, in our reading for today, Jesus takes that as a compliment if a dog is looking up to him to provide, to say, I know you are generous, Master, and I know that you provide so much that not only you feed your children, but even the dogs can eat too. Well, now that our grand dog Ginger has been clued in on what to do, I doubt we could stop her from begging at the table. And maybe we shouldn't. So this foreigner woman recognizes that God the Father is the king of the universe who brings forth bread from the earth. And she recognizes that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior, sent to give his life to purchase that precious pearl, his treasured and chosen people. And then only by eating the bread that Jesus provides, the healing that he alone can accomplish, the casting out of demons that only he can do, the removing of sin that only he can take away. Then she, this foreign woman, even though not deserving any more than a dog under the table, she needs him. She needs salvation. She needs God to provide, and she knows it. She needs Jesus to bring her into the family by faith, if not by genetics. I don't know how. The disciples don't know how. Perhaps Jesus, according to his humanity, doesn't even know how this woman understands that Jesus is the Savior, her Savior too. How did the wise men who came to, to visit Jesus when he was born, how did they know he was their Savior? But this woman understands what God says through Isaiah in today's reading. Soon my salvation will come. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord. We might think of dogs looking up to their master. To be his servants, these foreigners I will bring to my holy mountain. For I will gather yet others to Israel besides those already gathered. What has happened though is that somehow the seed of God's word got caught by the wind and the Holy Spirit is just like that invisible, unpredictable wind. Somehow the seed of God's word reached this woman where she was, and it took root, and now it's growing and bearing fruit. And she sees her need for Jesus to be her Lord and Master, to be the Son of David, to be her Savior, her need to belong to God's household even if it is like a dog under the table. And for her, the crumbs are enough. The Lord, you see, provides so abundantly that the children will have enough and there will be leftovers to feed dogs. Yes, but the entire world. After all, God wants to bring the whole world into his house his household. He doesn't go out into the world and make the whole world his house. He brings all the nations from the end of the earth into his house, that is, into his church. The children gr grow up in the house. They sit at the table, and even the children are masters. And you and I, have been brought into this household of faith too, just like dogs adopted into the family. We grow up into our faith as children of God, and that is what we are. And then our Father sends us out to bring others into the church, into his household, by telling them of the love of the Master that we've come to know, who calls us his own Father, and we his children. We want others, God wants other, to bring others in so that they too can be fed by him. But our master doesn't throw the children's bread out the window. He brings dogs inside the house. The dogs look up to the children to drop food from the table. 
But soon they're enjoying the abundance of the father and the children and soon become one of the family, just as dearly loved. Now, when Michelle and I had dogs of our own, we called ourselves mommy and daddy to the dogs and we cared for them as children. Now our children's dogs, to them we are grandma and grandpa. And they're just as much a part of our family. The children and grandchildren haven't lost their status in the household, nor have we neglected the little ones to care, it, to take their food and give it to the dogs. But the dogs have learned that after the family is cared for, they also will receive the care that they need, and they feel loved. You and I are foreigners, like that woman coming to Jesus today. But he has graciously brought us into his household and under his loving care. We are happy, we are blessed to be servants of the Lord. But Jesus says to us, no longer do I call you servants because a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. Greater love has no one than this, Jesus says, that someone lay down his life for his friends. And that's exactly what Jesus has done for us. And not to make us only friends, but together with Jesus, children of our Heavenly Father. Amen. And now may God's peace, which goes beyond all that we can understand, Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We join with all Christians everywhere in confessing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we pray as Christ our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.